questions for reflection. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ during this octave of Easter, all of our readings demonstrate the power of the resurrection. Jesus is alive, and he continues his redemptive mission through his mystical body, the church, of which all the baptized are members. He had promised his disciples they would do the works that he did, and even greater. And in our first reading, we see that promise being fulfilled. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour to pray. They find a lame beggar lying at the gate of the temple, the gate called Beautiful. Peter, now speaking with apostolic authority, tells the man, look at us. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The signs of the kingdom continue because it is Jesus who is still performing them through his apostles to whom he has entrusted his ongoing work. The beggar was overjoyed and began to leap for joy, praising God. The people ran into the portico of Solomon and Peter preached this powerful sermon. Once again, preaching the kerygma, a Greek word which refers to the essential elements of the gospel, which must be proclaimed to lead those who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior to him. And it is that kerygma which must once again be preached in this urgent hour, when and where it is, the signs of the kingdom, the miracles will still occur. The greatest of which is the conversion of souls. In the responsorial psalm this Easter octave day, David sings of divine majesty and human dignity. As beautiful as creation is, men and women are even more beautiful. They are the crown of creation. They, we, were created in the image and likeness of God. That image and likeness is restored through the Paschal mystery we are commemorating, the saving incarnation, life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do we believe this? Do we live it? Perhaps my favorite Easter octave reading is the one recorded in Luke's Gospel. We've been hearing or reading of this encounter yesterday and today. It's in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. The apostle recounts the disciples walking toward Emmaus, forlorn and perplexed over what had occurred to the Lord. Jesus draws near to them on their journey, but they do not recognize him. This is a common theme in many of the post-resurrection appearances recounted in the scriptures. The disciples continue their discussion of the events which had occurred during the days before surprised that the stranger beside them seemed unaware of what had occurred. In his empathy and compassion, Jesus enters into their experience and listens. Then he gives them the most profound expository sermon, or homily as Catholics call it, of all time. He explains the scriptures and shows these travelers how they all referred to the Christ. He explains the very events they were recounting to him on the road. However, even after the word was broken open by the living word incarnate, the disciples still did not recognize Jesus. They invited their fellow traveler to stay with them. Stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. And out of the depth of the love in his sacred heart, he agrees. And then we read these wonderful words. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. From the earliest centuries, Christians have understood this great encounter on the road as referring to the Holy Eucharist, the great sacrament of love, wherein Jesus Christ gives himself completely to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity. This is the sacrament we call Holy Communion because it brings us into communion with the Lord and in him with one another. Of course, in light of that, this wonderful encounter on the way to Emmaus 
opens up in beauty for all who reflect on it prayerfully during this Easter season. In the light of the encounter with the Lord and the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened. So it's meant to be with each one of us. The Holy Eucharist is more than a commemoration. It's an invitation into communion with the living God right now because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he walks with us on the road of life.